Thank you. So in my very, very long career, I have uh, learned a few things. One of the things that I learned was back when I was a medical student, if you made a discovery, you handed it over to Big Pharma and hoped that they would take the discovery to a therapy. After seeing time after time that that actually didn't work, and then starting several biotech companies where when they became Big Pharma, their profit was the most important part. We decided, Bob Klein and I, to see if we could avoid this valley of death by starting something new, not only at Stanford, but throughout California. And that was to involve the people who make discoveries in going through the preclinical test to see if it was real. And then instead of handing it over, to apply for funds from the California Institute of Regenerative Medicine and carry the research and the preclinical into clinical trials before allowing the money to decide how it should be distributed. This is a very, very important point because Lyme disease, we found, is very much like cancer. A cancer cell that goes from being, let's say, a normal blood-forming stem cell to a leukemia stem cell hides at every step of the way that it is going through the process. When we first looked at the leukemia and the purified normal stem cells, as you just heard, we found a molecule on the surface of those leukemia cells called, I hate to use the word, CD47. It's how we hide the knowledge of what we're doing from all of you. CD47, though, is better than that. It is a don't eat me signal for the eating cells of the body, which are called big eaters or macrophages. Every cancer now, we now know, has the don't eat me signal. So when people tell you you'll never find a cure for cancer because each cancer is different, they don't know what they're talking about. Now, I don't know if this will be a cure for cancer, but when Sherry and Laird came to me and said, well, can you think about Lyme disease, it became pretty clear to me that the Lyme agent also, if it persisted in the body, had to hide out from the macrophages. And so an antibody we developed from stem cell biology now is being applied first in experimental systems to say, can we take away the invisibility cloak of the don't eat me signal and get the last of the Lyme agents and the Lyme infected cells cleared with the antibody. The important principle here is that all along the way what we did, we could do at Stanford because we have physicists like Steve Quake and computer scientists like Debashi Sahu and a whole group of people who are all within walking distance of each other and the clinical wards where you see the patients with the disease. This is almost unique to have all of that within a mile of each other, eating together, talking together, discussing what goes on. And that's what's happening here. And if you go back and take one more page from Bob Klein's book, who wrote Proposition 71, the disease advocates are not sitting on the sideline raising money and keeping quiet. For all of these diseases we're developing, the disease advocates are front and center making sure that they remind us why we're doing the science so that we don't think we can just make a discovery, hand it over to Big Pharma, and wait and hope that something will come from it. I want to thank Laird and Sherry, who knows my cutting horse friend, Tom McGuane, like her, for stepping up and doing this because it won't happen unless you bring together the very best people and bring in all the best graduate students and medical students that we bring in in order to find a cure. Thank you.